And that is exactly why we interrupt normal broadcasting because it's Jamuri Day celebrations. My name is Trevor Mbijo. It's a pleasure having you with us. You're just in time for latest brief. Today, Kenyans mark Jamhuri Day, which is a major milestone in the nation's calendar. Ordinarily, it is on this day that we remember the momentous occasion in 1963 when the country became a republic, having attained independence from the British six months earlier. However, this is a day with a bit of a difference. On the first Jamhuri Day, the country was beaming with hope and dreams. The citizens had high expectations. Becoming a republic gave Kenyans the right to determine their destiny and find their place among the com community of nations. The clarion call was unity for national growth and progress. Today, however, the country is pulling in different directions. We are coming out of a turbulent electioneering period that has split the nation right down in the middle. Suspicion and mistrust still reign supreme. But those are live pictures you're seeing from Kasarani, the 60,000 capacity stadium where the president is expected any time from now. He's, he's meant to preside over the Jamuri Day celebrations, the 54th since attaining independence. And our very own Leila Mohammed and Enoch Sikoli are covering those events for you live. Let's cross over to Leila and find out what the latest is. Leila, the turnout seems to be a bit low. Is that, is, is that a correct observation, Leila? Well, a very good Nizamu morning, Trevor Mbija, and happy Jamuhuri Day to you and all Kenyans from across this great republic, from wherever you are. Uh, we are coming to you live from the Kasarani International Stadium where there will be the 54th celebrations of uh, Kenya's Independence Day. What you can see on your screens uh, is uh, the teams from the Kenya Air Force, uh, the Kenya Army and the Kenya Navy ready to mount a guard of honor on behalf in honor of the Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces who is also the President of the, the Republic of Kenya, President Uhuru Kenyatta who is expected inside the stadium anytime soon. So the highlights of this morning of course will be uh, the speech by the President of the Republic of Kenya but also there will be a trooping of the colors ceremony here performed this uh, Jamuhuri Day by members of the Kenya Air Force from uh, the Moi Air Base right here in Isli in Nairobi County. This an honor for each of the services of the Kenya Defense Forces just to come out and honor the president on this particular day. We've seen uh, troops from the Kenya Navy doing this before and also the Kenya Army. So it's going to be quite an interesting uh, celebration of events uh, this morning. So President Uhuru Kenyatta is expected to come in via one side of the stadium. He will be on his ceremonial track of the CNC. Of course, he will be accompanied by the Chief of Defense Forces, that is General Samson Mwathethe, and they will drive in and just honor uh, this guard of honor that has been mounted here before he actually gets down to the business of the day and uh, continue with the rest of the festival activities the celebrations are not as enthusiastic as President Uhuru Kenyatta was being inaugurated for his second term in office. Uh, the stadium uh, quite empty uh, with regard to how many Kenyans have actually shown up to participate in these celebrations. We saw uh, on the 28th of 100,000 Kenyans coming in there are very many numbers uh, just to be here and to see the celebrations on that day. However, this 60,000 plus capacity stadium only uh, being half of what could have been expected. But that has not dampened the spirits of uh, those who are here this morning, Trevor, uh, just to celebrate the gains and the misses that the country has been through in the last one year as you can remember this has been a very uh, long and winding year in terms of the political situation that has been experienced we've seen uh, two uh, elections happen one general election and one presidential election we have also experienced two uh, times where the supreme court had to sit and uh, make sure that they made a judgment in terms of who had the mandate to be elected, uh, who was elected legally as a president of this country, the first one being historic in, in, in every 
through a 4-2 majority decision uh, declaring that uh, the presidential election of August 8th uh, taken as it should have been in terms of the legal matters and uh, thus taking President Uhuru Kenyatta uh, casting him against all seven other contenders uh, where they battled it out again on the 26th of October. Then uh, Raila Odinga who was the main challenger of uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta and the one who actually took him to court and the IEBC saying that he will not participate in that uh, process again and uh, so he had a, he was expected to officiate another event this morning coinciding with this celebrations but however the nasa coalition yesterday announcing that that uh, process has been put to a halt for now as they deliberate on the key issues of that incident which the government had termed if it would have gone on it would have been a matter of high treason and uh, if they were uh, arrested uh, then probably they would be facing charges as high as uh, being hanged or murder so it is uh, an interesting year for many Kenyans in terms of how we have grown uh, on June the 1st uh, we saw the Madaraka Express starting its journey from Mombasa to Nairobi uh, we are told by will start uh, transporting goods from the port of Mombasa all the way to Nairobi that project the big uh, in terms of how the budgets were executed for the country uh, that uh, project uh, cause costing more or almost a trillion uh, shillings in terms of uh, how much it will cost the country so those are some of the main this particular year, Mashuja Day, was uh, this year uh, celebrated at the Uhuru Park, considering that this facility, the Kasarani Stadium and the Nyao National Stadium, were undergoing uh, uh, preparations uh, for hosting Chan 2018. Then that is one setback that Kenya has faced. Uh, so we are seeing uh, some of the leaders arriving here at uh, the Kasarani Stadium, much to the amusement and the joy of uh, those who are, have arrived here. If I can look clearly, I see that it is uh, Deputy President uh, William Ruto and his lady, uh, uh, the, the second lady of the Republic of Kenya. They are just arriving here. We see him in a yellow sash, uh, something similar to what the leaders were wearing uh, on August 27th, 2010, at the Uhuru Park, when the 2010, the new constitution was being inaugurated in this country. So he's taking his place uh, at uh, the podium and just uh, saying hello to the Chief of Defense Forces and his deputies there, the head of the Air Force and the, and the Kenya Army, uh, before taking his place uh, at uh, that uh, podium. So the president that uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta is not far uh, off. We are aware that uh, it is the first lady, uh, Margaret Kenyatta, who will enter the stadium. She will be dropped at the dais and uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta will stand outside and uh, have uh, to get onto his official vehicle of the Defense Forces, which he will yeah, uh, and where the rest of the festivities will be conducted uh, this particular year being important for the troops from uh, the Moy Air Base in Isli they will be given that most important honor of performing the trooping of the color ceremony so we will see two flags we will see their Moy Air Base flag it's blue in color and we will also see the Kenyan flag uh, uh, being raised here, all those will be given. Uh, there is another vehicle coming into the stadium. Hopefully, we shall be able to know if it is the First Lady Margaret Kenyatta or or some of the other leaders. Uh, maybe uh, it's a president. We have a guest in the in the stadium today. We are former president of. Your Excellency. 
Um, celebrate with Kenyans the 54th uh, uh, ceremony of uh, the Mashuja Day. Like I was saying before, uh, this has been a tough year for many Kenyans across uh, the public, the, 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 the divide. We have had a long period, in fact, the longest in terms of uh, politicking and uh, we saw President Uhuru Kenyatta campaign more than five months. He jetted across most parts of this country uh, saying clearly he had been highly disappointed by the first September ruling by the Supreme Court judges that uh, how he was uh, termed as the elected, the duly elected president of the Republic of Kenya was not correct. Uh, the, the court had been presented with issues of um, so many inconsistencies and he said despite the fact that he does not agree with the court process or the decision he was going to go back to the people and to campaign to them because according to him they were the most important people and he went ahead and won the October 26th election by about 7 million votes his second 70,000 votes, a Kuruau court, the third with about 10,000 votes, and the rest, uh, if you can just accumulate lively, 1,000 votes, all the rest of those. So the country has a bit mood where a parts of the, the, the country are saying they do not recognize President Uhuru Kenyatta's presidency, while others are saying it is time to move on, and those are some of the banners that we have in the stadium today, they say tuna undugu, tuna uzalendo, tuna sauti moja, Kenya mbele, tuna amani, tuna eneza amani, Kenya moving forward, mbali tunaenda uh, na nimbali tumetoka. Indeed, uh, there have been instances where people have been holding on to their hearts literally uh, when there were some scares of probably uh, clashes happening in various parts of the country. But uh, we have seen uh, that uh, the good Lord has been good to this nation despite uh, the challenges that we have gone through. Um, we have come out resilient in one way or another despite the, po the political back and forth that we have seen uh, this particular year. So it is going to be an interesting Jamuhuri day where there's a lot to be grateful for this particular, this particular morning uh, despite all the challenges that we have faced. So Kenyans, those who have managed to come to the Kasarani Stadium, have showed up in their numbers. We have also children from primary schools who have come uh, to show in solidarity with other Kenyans and they're representing the colors of uh, the flag across the various aisles here. And uh, as well, security detail is top notch just to ensure that everything goes uh, smoothly. So we have, uh, a group of officers right from the special forces of the Kenya army. We have, uh, the, we have also uh, the Kenya police, the GSU and uh, the regular police as well as the NYS that are just uh, ensuring that there's crowd control and also there is the local administration where we have seen the chiefs and uh, other leaders just come out to ensure that this particular celebration goes on without any hitches so Trevor, uh, it's an interesting morning. We've seen a lot of entertainment from uh, different uh, personalities earlier in the morning, but uh, what now is being awaited is the main highlight of the day, which is the arrival, which is the, uh, which is the arrival of uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta any time now. Uh, the Guard of Honor being uh, mounted as the officers uh, wait for their commander in chief uh, on the uh, the person who is now addressing the nation is uh, warrant officer to Gibson Mwandawiro who who is who is who is also here just uh, to ensure that uh, the military part of this procession is going on as smoothly as possible as the maroon commanders taking uh, uh, a bit of the entertainment just before the commander-in-chief of the Kenya Defense Forces drives into this facility 
uh, from wherever you are, I'm sure there are uh, Jamuhuri Day celebrations in all the 47 counties in the country. But this particular one here in Nairobi is where uh, the national event is going to happen. The president's speech is going to be read by the administration officials in those particular counties. And it is expected that uh, the governors of those counties will uh, participate in those ceremonies as we await uh, for the main event uh, 54 years what what are we expecting from the president's speech uh, this afternoon so there are many expectations for many visit for many kenyans across the republic uh, the main highlight like i said before is uh, the president's speech uh, most kenyans are expecting him to talk about how to unify the country after an entire five or so months where we saw kenyans uh, divided in terms of ethnicity and uh, their political leanings and how they think uh, uh, basically so he said that his main duty when he assumes office which was about two weeks ago was on how to unify the country and he said that uh, despite the fact that he was not voted for in some areas of this republic he was going to go there and do a lot of development just to bring Kenya at par with each other there are some people who are saying that there's uh, differences in terms of how people are getting a piece of the pie or the Kenyan cake and uh, those are some of the things that he is expected to talk about this particular day how he is he going to uh, to bring together 42 tribes of people 42 individual uh, uh, ways of thinking and uh, so much more uh, we are also expecting to talk about how the economy uh, will be performing in the next uh, few months considering uh, there was a time and a period where we were not sure where exactly the country was going were we going to do uh, an election or not the opposition saying that there would not be a repeat election however uh, when i put this question to the minister the cabinet secretary for uh, industrialization uh, Aden Mohammed he was not in, in, in a position to give me exactly uh, the numbers uh, in terms of how much uh, the country had lost then they were saying that tourism which is uh, Kenya's biggest earner was uh, suffering but now we are seeing changes uh, uh, happening uh, so many visitors coming from across uh, the world to visit our main highlight uh, that is the coast and the Maasai Mara and other parts of Kenya that have opened up to tourism as well as Kenyans being urged to participate in domestic tourism as well as to just to boost the sector. Uh, also President Uhuru Kenyatta uh, is going to give us probably in his speech what is he expected to do in the next five years of his last term, uh, what are some of the projects that he began uh, in uh, his first term as President of the Republic of Kenya and uh, what other issues will he be picking up other than uh, continuing with the standard gauge railway which whose second uh, uh, part of the project goes all the way to Naivasha uh, before it goes to Kisumu and then uh, crosses the border into Uganda. Uh, like I said before, this is Kenya's biggest uh, project uh, since the Jubilee government had uh, taken over in 2013 uh, and uh, so many more Kenyans are going back to using the railway uh, in terms of uh, a means of transport for getting from one county to the other. So many Kenyans using the Madaraka Express uh, to go uh, to Mombasa in, in a short time span. It's quite cheap. President Uru Kenyatta saying that uh, general tickets will be as cheap as 700 bob and uh, those ones who want to enjoy themselves a bit more uh, will have to pay about 3,000 bob uh, to be in, in, a, in a higher class. So, so those are some of the <coughs> of the gains that Kenyans are uh, enjoying this particular year in the fifth year of President Huru's presidency. Uh, this being the first uh, Jamuhuri Day celebrations he will preside over in his second term as President of the Republic of Kenya. So on the far right uh, where there's an army officer, uh, j they're just making their final preparations. Uh, everything seems uh, to point to the fact that uh, uh, the Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces could have arrived within the vicinity of the stadium and uh, 
uh, not to eat into the entertainment of what is going on, let me just hand you over to the production team of NTV Kenya where we are bringing you the live celebrations of uh, this year's Jamuhuri Day celebrations. Basi wanainchi tuweze kusimama, tuweze sote kusimama, tumkaribishe, mueshimiwa, Margaret Kenyatta, mama wataifa wa jamhuri ya Kenya. Karibu sana, Your Excellency, the First Lady. Karibu sana, Mweshimi wa Mama wa Taifa. Karibu sana. Basi wakati wote kwa nzivi sasa nivi sema, tutampokea Mweshimi wa Rice. Basi kwa parapanda hizo, ana wasili tu, endele kusimama tafadhali. Kumpokea rais wa taifa letu la Kenya Amiri jeshi mkuu wa majeshi ya ulinzi ya Kenya Maroon Commandos tafadhali karibuni twendelee kumkaribisha Mheshimiwa Rais Haya makofi mazuri Inua bendera hizo peperusha Kenya taifa letu Kenya Karibu Kenya Kenya inchi yetu Karibu mweshimi ya rais Kenya Kenya taifa letu Kenya Ongeza makofi Kenya Kenya inchi yetu Karibu Kanyaba inchi ya kukwa kukwa Mweshimi ya rais Shimura, Kenya, 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 Kenya,
tumesimama tafadhali kwa wimbo wa taifa na wimbo wa jumuiya Afrika Mashariki na mashirika kwaya ya mashirika ya kiserikali na wizara mtatuongoza kuimba nyimbo hizi basi mkuu wa goride hii hivi sasa anakuja kuweza kumuomba kwa heshima rais wetu wa jamhuri ya Kenya na mirejeshi mkuu wa majeshi yote ya ulinzi aweze kuikagua goride hii Asanteni kwa heshima tunaweza kuketi tafadhali. Anasindikizwa na mkuu wa majeshi yetu ya ulinzi ya Kenya, Jenerali Samson Mwathethe.
basi mkuu wa goride hii ameomba ruhusa ama idhini ya kuendelea na goride nilivyokueleza goride ya siku leo ni ndefu sana nafuata burudani fupi ya mziki kiletwa na bendi zetu za majeshi ya ulinzi ya Kenya wimbo wema na fadhili alafu kisha kunywa maji ya uzima katika mwendo wa kasi
basi mkuu wa kikundi cha kwanza anabadilishana na naibu wake atakaye kuja kuchukua bendera ambayo sasa imekaribia gwaride basi kikundi hiki kinasongea mbele hivi sasa kuja kuweza kuchukua bendera rasmi na kuweza kuitembeza mbele ya wenzao na kisha baadaye waweze kutembeza bendera hii mbele ya rais wetu wa jamhuri ya Kenya na amiri jeshi mkuu wa majeshi yetu ya ulinzi ya Kenya mkuu wa kikundi na nyuma yake ni yule kala ofsa atakaye beba bendera yenyewe bendera sasa imekaribia kabisa kama vile ilivyo wakati wa harusi mtu kujiandaa kabisa hivyo basi kikundi hiki hivi sasa kinajiandaa kupokea bendera hii na ni wakati wake sasa parade arusiam kupata kuonyosha vizuri kwenye msururu tayari kupokea bendera hii ambayo kwa sasa iko chini yake sajini mwenye alama ya kikomo na masajini wengine wawili wanaosindikiza bendera yenyewe basi baada ya parade arasem kuhakikisha kwamba kikundi hiki kiko tayari kupokea bendera anajongea hivi sasa kuja hambele ili aweze kuichukua bendera hii kutoka kwa yule sajini mwenye alama ya kikomo naye pia kala ofsa anajiandaa kuweza kuipokea bendera ilivyo desturi bendera hii hupewa heshima ya hali ya juu kabisa ndio maana kila siku wananchi tunaomba kwamba unapokutana na bendera hii na we pia uipatie heshima ya hali ya juu anaishika kabisa yule parade arasiam na yule sajini mwenye alama ya kikomo kuweza kuipatia heshima kala ofisa naye pia anaipatia heshima bendera hii kisha aweze kuregesha upanga wake tayari kupokea bendera sasa na kuweka kwenye mfuko ama mkoba wake pale jongea karibu ingiza kwenye mkoba arasema namuuliza umeshika kabisa tingiza kabisa umeshika ili niwachilie eh nimeshika ameshika kabisa ametulia naye pia narudi nyuma kuweza kupeana heshima tena kwenye bendera hiyo heshima mheshimiwa rais mabibi na mabwana tusimame kwa wimbo wa taifa
Mheshimiwa Rais, mabibi na mabwana tunaweza kuketi kwa heshima tafadhali. Basi baada ya bendera hii ku sasa kuingia rasmi parade RSM pamoja na yule sajini mwenye alama ya kikomo ambaye alileta bendera hii wanachukua nafasi yao nyuma ya kikundi hiki ilikuwa tayari kuitembeza bendera hii mbele ya wanajeshi wenzao kisha baadaye waitembeze mbele ya mheshimiwa rais na miri jeshi mkuu sherehe za kutembeza na kuonyesha bendera zina historia inayorudi nyuma ya karne ya 17 wakati kulianzishwa majeshi duniani sherehe za kuonyeshaji bendera zilikuwa zinafanyika mbele ya malkia wa Uingereza kila kikosi ukabidhiwa bendera mbili moja ya rais kama hii tunaiona hapa na moja ya kikosi chenyewe ambayo huambatana na sifa za kikosi hicho kama vile medali za kivita tunu na kadhalika bendera bendera ya rais huonyeshwa tu wakati wa sherehe za kitaifa bendera hii hupewa heshima ya hali ya juu sana na pia huwa katika ulinzi mkali sana kikosi kikionyesha bendera yake tukio hilo huandikwa katika historia ya kikosi chenyewe kwa kumbukumbu Moi Airbus ilikabidhiwa bendera hii mnamo tarehe 14 Desemba mwaka wa tatu katika bustani ya Jamhuri Nairobi na rais mwanzilishi wa, wa taifa letu Hayati Mzee Jomo Kenyatta Afisa aliyekabidhiwa bendera hiyo alikuwa ni Luteni Muhammad Abdalla Badi ambaye kwa sasa ni brigadier na pia mkuu wa kituo cha Moi cha wanahewa Moi Airbus imeonyesha bendera hii mara mbili mwaka 2004 na, na mwaka 2012 na na katika uga wa kitaifa wa nyayo hivi sasa mara yao ya tatu Moi Airbus kama kikosi ina historia inayorudi nyuma hadi tarehe mosi Agosti mwaka 40 wakati uwanja wa ndege wa Isli ulitumika kwa operesheni za jeshi la wanahewa la kikoloni Royal Air Force Isili ilikuwa ni moja wapo wa makao makuu ya jeshi la anga la Uingereza lakini baada ya vita vya pili vya dunia Uwanja huo ulitumika pia na ndege zingine za kiraia. Uliweza kutumika pia na ndege zilizohusika katika upigaji picha wa eneo wa ramani ya eneo la Afrika Mashariki. Uwanja huo pia ulitumika katika mashambulizi dhidi ya maumau na baada ya vita hivyo Moi Airbus ilipata sura mpya kwa kuweza kupata ndege zao za kwanza zilizokuwa zikijulikana kama Beverly na Venoms tarehe mosi Juni mwaka 64 bunge lilipitisha sheria kuanzisha jeshi la wanahewa la Kenya ikiwa na kauli mbiu tuko imara angani na kujulikana kama Kenya Air Force Isili waliokuwa waliokuwa waku wa kwanza ni kama vile Wing Commander V Bridges ambaye alirudi kwa Uingereza baada ya sisi kunyakuwa uhuru Luteni Kanali Gishuru ambaye kwa sasa ni meja generali mstaafu ambaye alinuka na kuwa kamanda wa kwanza mwa Afrika ambaye siku ya leo yuko pamoja nasi hapa katika uwanja huu meja GS Chana mstaafu luteni kanali ambaye pia yuko nasi leo luteni kanali Dagate ambaye ni marehemu kwa sasa luteni kanali DK Washira meja generali mstaafu meja Ekimani Luteni Kanali mstaafu, Luteni Kanali W Mwangi ambaye ni, ni, ni marehemu kwa sasa na hali kadhalika Luteni Kanali PR PR Kamunyu ambaye pia ni mstaafu. Ili kukidhi mahitaji ya kuwa na marubani wazalendo kulikuwa na umuhimu 
wa kuanzisha chuo cha urubani katika kituo hiki marubani tano wa kwanza walifuzu tarehe 18 Februari mwaka 65 katika sherehe iliyohudhuriwa na rais mwanzilishi hayati mzee Jomo Kenyatta chuo cha ufundi pia kilianzishwa kuapa mafunzo mafundi wa mitambo pamoja na uhandisi katika nyanja mbalimbali baada ya jaribio ambalo halikufaulu la kupindua serikali mwaka 82 Kenya ya Fosisili ilibadilishwa jina na kuwa Moi Airbus tarehe 21 Agosti mwaka 82 Moi Airbus imeongozwa na wakumba mbalimbali kama vile kanali Kamonya Captain Natambo ambaye yuko na leo Lieutenant Colonel Sumbeyo ambaye ni Lieutenant General Mstafu Kanali Leshan ambaye ni Lieutenant General Mstafu Brigadier Tuwei na hali kadhalika Brigadier JW Karange ambaye baadaye amekuwa General Daktari Mstafu ambaye amekuwa mkuu wa majeshi ya ulinzi ya Kenya Kanali Sikati Kanali JN Waweru ambaye ni Lieutenant General Mstafu na hali kadhalika Kanali SN Twitter ambaye kwa sasa ni Major General na mkuu wa jeshi letu la wanahewa siku ya leo. Mkuu wa kituo hiki hivi sasa ni Kanali M Muhammad Abdali Badi Brigadier ambaye mpaka hivi sasa yuko pamoja nasi katika uga huu. basi baada ya kutembeza bendera mbele ya wenzao hivi sasa kikundi hiki pia kinanyoshwa vyema kabisa katika misururu iliyonyoka kama vile wenzao na baadaye kuweza kunyanyua bunduki zao Wanajigawanya hivi sasa kwa vikundi takriban vinane tayari kuweza kuitembeza bendera hii kwa mwendo wa kinyonga na hatimaye mwendo wa kasi kama vile nilivyotangulia kusema hapo awali kila wakati wanapo tembeza bendera wanapopita mbele ya rais sharti kuweza kunyooshwa vyema kwenye misururu iliyonyooka kama vile umefungwa na kamba yani wakati wake tena parade arasian naye baada ya kukamilisha shughuli hiyo anaondoka kwa kasi kabisa kwa muda mfupi sana aliopewa ili kuweza kuchukua nafasi yake kwenye gwaride pale mbele shabash amefika salama basi nilivyosema ataitembeza bendera hii kwa mwendo wa kinyonga na hatimaye mwendo wa kasi bendera hii nilivyosema hutolewa tu wakati wa sherehe za kitaifa kama hivi 
Kwa hivyo hata wanajeshi wenyewe wanapata fursa siku ya leo kupata kuiona bendera yao kwa karibu. Na hali kadhalika pia Mheshimiwa Rais na Amiri Jeshi Mkuu wa majeshi yetu ya ulinzi ya Kenya. kikundi cha kwanza hadi cha nne cha jeshi letu la wanahewa kikundi cha tano na cha sita kikosi cha tisa cha jeshi letu la nchi kavu cha saba na cha nane jeshi letu la wanamaji
Wanaungana tena kuwa tayari kujongea mbele hatua 14 na kisha baadaye watavua kofia zao basi wanawekwa sawa baada ya kutembea kwa muda mrefu basi ni wakati wake tena parade RSM kumbuka kwamba wakati watakuwa wamevua kofia tayari kwa heko kwa rais kina dada huwa hawavui kofia zao kwa hiyo ni jambo ambalo utalishuhudia punde tu watakapojongea mbele nilivyosema hatua 14 Kwa heshima mheshimiwa rais mabibi na mabwana tusimame kwa review order na wimbo wa taifa basi baada ya heko kwa rais wetu wa jamhuri ya Kenya amiri jeshi mkuu wa majeshi yote ya ulinzi ya Kenya mkuu wa goride hivi sasa anakuja kuweza kuomba idhini ya kuondoa goride hii uwanjani baada ya goride ya kufana kabisa siku ya leo
Asanteni kwa heshima tunaweza kukuketi tafadhali. Wanajigawanya hivi sasa kwa vikundi takriban kumina viwili vido, vidogo vidogo na bendera ya kikosi. Sharti kuweza kuwepo mbele kabisa ya gweridi kama vile mnavyo shudia kawa officer akijipanga pale mbele. Ilivyo desturi wanapopita mbele ya jukwaa la rais sharti kuweza kunyoshwa vizuri kwenye misururu sasa wako katika misururu mitatu mitatu tayari kuondoka uwanjani desturi pare darasia kawaida paka kujikaza kabisa kufika pale mbele kwa muda mfupi sana aliyokabidhiwa ili aweze kuwa tayari naye pia kuondoka kwa nafasi yake pale mbele ameshafika shabash Oliver Skian to your duties quick match ya kwamba baada ya gwaride hii ya kufana kabisa trooping of the color by Moy Evans wanajeshi hawa sasa wanaenda kujiunga na wenzao katika kuendelea kuimarisha usalama wa taifa letu kuhakikisha kwamba mipaka yetu iko salama anga letu liko salama na hali kadhalika fuo zetu za bahari ziko salama masaa mane. Mheshimiwa Rais Mkuu wa Gwaride hii amekuwa Luteni Kanali Apollo Ogola Aloka na anayebeba bendera hiyo Luteni Bonfas Magut Parade Arasem Warrant of Sir Juan David Cheriot Mutai kikundi cha tatu kikiongozwa cha nne na Major Benedict Awar A na Kikundi cha saba kikosi cha tisa cha jeshi la Chikavu Major Abraham Lagat Kikundi cha kumi jeshi la wanamaji Major James Mugo Munyao
Parade Adjutant Captain Naima Fernandez Mkurugenzi wa Mziki Major Amon Moshumbe Mwanyuma Senior Drum Major Senior Sergeant Rafael Kibisu Mheshimiwa Rais tamasha za ndege kikundi cha kwanza ndege zetu za kupeana mafunzo kiwango cha msingi zinazojulikana kama bulldog ndege ambazo zina uwezo wa kuruka kwa utaratibu sana siku ya leo tamasha hizi Mheshimiwa Rais tumezigawanya katika vikundi vi, kulingana na jinsi kazi ya ndege ilivyo kwa hivyo basi vikundi vitatu vya kwanza mheshimiwa rais vitakuwa ni vikundi vya ndege za kuweza kuwapa mafunzo marubani wetu inachofuata mheshimiwa rais ni ndege aina ya grob hizi zikiwa ni ndege ambazo hutoa mafunzo kiwango cha kati ama kwa kiingereza intermediate trainers ndege aina ya grob hizi zina uwezo wa kujibiringa hewani na pia kuweza kuruka kwa kasi kuliko zile ndege za kwanza ndege aina ya grob kumbuka kwamba warubani wetu kama vile nilivyoweza kusoma historia ya Moi Airbase wao upata mafunzo yao hapa hapa nchini kikundi cha tatu ndege aina ya tukano mheshimiwa rais hizi ni ndege zinazopeana mafunzo kiwango cha juu advanced trainers zikiwachana pale moja kushoto moja kulia na katikati kuweza kulala chali na kurudi mahali ambapo imetoka tazama ujuzi wa hali ya juu kabisa wa vijana wetu marubani wetu katika jeshi letu naona hewa kila wakati ninavyosema mheshimiwa rais moshi mweupe unaashiria kwamba hadi sasa anga letu ni salama kama vile wanavyosema katika kauli mbiu yao kwamba tuko imara angani ni kweli masai ishirini na manne jeshi letu la wanahewa ni macho kabisa kikundi kitakachofuata mheshimiwa rais kitakuwa ni kikundi cha ndege za uchukuzi ambazo zitakuja kwa utaratibu kabisa kikundi cha kwanza cha ndege hizi ni ndege aina ya Y12 ndege hizi zina uwezo wa kupata kuwasafirisha wanajeshi wetu wanapoelekea katika shughuli zao za kivita na hali kadhalika pia hutumika kuweza kuwasafirisha abiria mashuhuri wanapoelekea katika shughuli zao za kikazi ndege aina ya Y12 nilivyosema ni kikundi cha ndege za uchukuzi ndege hizi zimepata kuwepo katika jeshi letu la angani mpaka hivi sasa likipata kufanya kazi nzuri kabisa kikundi cha pili mheshimiwa rais ni ndege aina ya dash 8 ndege hizi za kuweza kuwasafirisha abiria mashuhuri wanapokuwa katika shughuli zao za kiserikali ndege aina ya dash 8 hali kadhalika pia ndege hizi uweza kumsafirisha amiri jeshi mkuu anapokuwa pia na shughuli zake za kitaifa kikundi cha ndege aina ya dash 8 ndege takayofuata mheshimiwa rais ndege aina ya foka 70 ndege ambayo hutumika hasa kuweza kumsafirisha rais wetu wa jamhuri ya Kenya na amiri jeshi mkuu wa majeshi yote ya ulinzi ya Kenya anapokuwa katika shughuli zake 
za, za kikazi mbali na karibu ndege aina ya Focus 70 Mheshimiwa Rais ndege zetu za kivita ndizo zinakazofuata na kwa sababu huenda kwa kasi sana hivyo basi zimeweza kupatia ndege hizo za uchukuzi nafasi ili ziweze kwenda kidogo mbali ili kwamba ndege hizi zinapokuja kwa kasi basi zisiweze kuweza kuzipata zile ndege za uchukuzi kwani kama vile nilivyosema siku zote ndege zetu za kivita zina uwezo wa kuruka kwa kasi sana hasa zinapokuwa vitani ndege hizi huruka kwa kasi ambayo mara nyingi huwa ni mara mbili ya ya speed ya ya, ya sauti ndege zetu za kivita hizi aina ya F5 ndege zilizo na uwezo wa kuruka kwa kasi na hali kadhalika zilizo na uwezo kuweza kubeba makombora mbalimbali ikiwa ni pamoja na risasi nzito kabisa za kuweza kupambana na ndege zingine hewani ndege za adui na hali kadhalika wakati zinapopambana na ndege za adui hujulikana kama dog fight kule hewani na hali kadhalika mabomu na pia missiles ambazo hutumika pia kuweza kufanya mashambulizi kwa adui wakiwa ridhini ndege aina ya F5 zilizo na uwezo nilivyosema hapo awali kuruka kwa kasi sana na zinapokuwa na matatizo ndege hizi uweza kukarabia na mafundi wetu wa mitambo na handisi ambao wameweza kupata mafunzo kutoka kwa chuo chao cha majeshi ya ulinzi ya Kenya ya kwanza ndege mheshimiwa rais kutuletea mzunguko wa kushoto ndege nyingine inakuja tena kwa nyuma mheshimiwa rais itakayo lala chali hewani na kurudi mahali ambapo imetoka tazama imelala chali kabisa na kurudi mahali ambapo imeweza kutoka ndege nyingine inakuja tatu tena kituletea tamasha nyingine ya moja baada ya nyingine ndege zetu za kivita kumbuka kwamba inapolala chali basi rubani kule ndani kalala chali ndege ya tatu kuja juu na kutuletea mizunguko ya juu ama ukipenda vertical roll Jengine hapo tena kulala chali mheshimiwa rais na kurudi tena mahali ambapo imetoka nilivyosema inapolala chali basi rubani pia ndani kalala chali kichwa chini miguu juu nyingine tena hapa inakuja kutia mizunguko ya kushoto hizi huwa ni mbinu za kuweza kupambana na maadui hewani kwa kuweza kukwepa kukwepa risasi za adui hivyo basi ndege hizi uweza kujibiringa hewani jinsi ulivyoweza kushuhudia kwa umarufu na kwa ustadi nilivyosema haya ndege moja nyingine kwa kasi ah mheshimiwa rais hiyo ni kasi ya chini tu <laughs> ah, lakini Nilivyosema hapo awali ndege hizi huruka kwa kasi ya mara mbili ya sauti inavyokwenda. Eh ndege zetu za kivita. Mheshimiwa Rais, kikundi kitakachofuata itakuwa ni kikundi cha ndege zetu aina ya helicopter. Zinakuja kwa utaratibu kabisa ndege aina ya helicopters ya kwanza ikiwa ni ndege aina ya puma kwa mbali pale aina ya puma ikisindikizwa na ndege aina ya yui ndege aina ya yui ambazo ndege hizi ni mpya kabisa katika jeshi letu la wanahewa ndege aina ya puma ikisindikizwa kwa taratibu na ndege aina ya yui ndege zetu aina ya helicopters kikundi kitakachokuja mwisho kutufungia tamasha itakuwa ni ndege aina ya MI 171E 
ndege yetu ya uchukuzi ambayo pia hutumika kuweza kuwasafirisha wanajeshi wetu wanapokuwa vitani mahali ambapo magari hayawezi kufika basi ndege aina ya MI na hali kadhalika Puma usafirisha wanajeshi wetu inasindikizwa na ndege za mashambulizi ndege aina ya Cobra hizi pia ni ndege mpya kabisa katika jeshi letu la wanahewa ndege aina ya MI171E ikiwa inabeba bango hapo linalosema God bless Kenya ya kwamba Mwenyezi Mungu aweze kuibariki nchi yetu ya Kenya ikisindikizwa nilivyosema na ndege za mashambulizi ndege aina ya Cobra ndege mpya kabisa hizi katika jeshi letu la wanahewa Tuwapigie makofi tafadhali marubani wetu wote kwa pamoja nikiweza kuwashukuru wote waliofanikisha tamasha hizi za kijeshi zote kwa pamoja Defense Forces Sergeant Major Warrant of Sergeant John Mudhoka kio pamoja na wenzake Kenya Army Sergeant Major Warrant of Sergeant William Ogutu na hali kadhalika Kenya Air Force Sergeant Major Warrant of Sergeant Dennis Talengo na pia Kenya Navy Sergeant Major Warrant of Sergeant Haji Bana Omar ningependa kuwarudisha kwake mwenzangu aweze kuendelea na ratiba inayofuata karibu bwana Peter enjoy Asante sana mwenzangu warrant officer 2 Gibson Mwadawiro Naomba kwa heshima tutulie kwa maombi mafupi Tukiongozwa kwanza na mzee Stephen Oruma Olenkaru kutoka kaunti ya Kajiado Nai was nai Arasaya Ai le bunya mrangai Ngai was nai ramayana nolong Ngai was nai ramayana namasho Nai was nai ramayana kenya Nai was nai ramayana siage Nai nda yosodwa Nai nda yosodwa marai Nai njo siaga sarge me bukwari da na go binjwa ngai yai Aro mona ngai yai wa ndarasi Ngai ramayana uhuru kenyata Ramayana William Ruto Ndai yosodwa bokira meroi go kenya Ndenge no narige kenya Ndanga riyano Ara saya yang kaya, aroh mana lagi rian? Nai ramai yang naginya, nai indah joso dua, ara saya, yang jero, yang dobo, mejo anda yang kaya sebara, yang doro bilo, yang daru lalang lalang kai, asholing. Atakai tuan goza kuam mawam bisasa niluteh ni kanari Abdul Marik Rubea, wa majeshi awlinzi. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the entirely merciful the especially merciful there is none worthy of worship but he the ever living the one who sustains and protects all that exists neither slumber nor sleep overtakes him may peace and blessings of Allah be upon the noblest of all mankind the seal of prophets and messengers prophet Muhammad peace be upon him O Allah you have created us from a single male and female, Adam and Eve, and made us into nations, tribes, and communities that we may know one another. Really, the most honored in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of us, and Allah has all knowledge. O oh Allah, our affairs are in your hand. Enlight what is dark in us, strengthen what is weak in us, mend what is broken in us, heal what is sick in us, Strength, strengthen what is crooked in us and revive whatever peace and love has died in us, O possessor of majesty and honor. Make this country safe and secure, generous and comfortable. Protect its leadership, its coherence, and its unity. We ask you, O Allah, using your most beautiful names and by your attributes that are most high. Amen. Na atakaya tufungia kwa maombi ni kanari Father Benjamin Maswili wa majeshi ya ulinzi. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. O Lord God of hosts, before whose most high seat, the armies of the angels singing forever, even of glory. 
You are the Lord of the universe, gracious and merciful to your creation. We have come together today to commemorate our Independence Day and to offer to you our praise and thanksgiving for all the graces and blessings you have given us since independence. Accepting compassion, O Lord, our prayers for our leaders and beloved country Kenya, that through the wisdom of His Excellence, Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta, the President and the Commanding Chief of the Defense Forces of the Republic of Kenya, His Deputy, His Excellency, Honorable William Luto, and the integrity of all the citizens, harmony and justice may be assured and the lasting prosperity come with the peace. We pray, O Lord, that you give all our leaders the spirit of counsel and fortitude, set first wisdom and courage, and shake your faithfulness and the spirit of sacrifice in serving our nation. Merciful Father, we humble ask you to bless the Kenyan Defense Forces leadership and to safeguard all our troops wherever they may be, on land, in the air, on the sea. Give them your wisdom and courage and the strength as they execute their mandate of defending and protecting our sovereignty and territorial integrity of the Republic of Kenya from internal and external aggression. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unit of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mheshimiwa Uhuru Kenyatta, Rais wa Jamhuri ya Kenya na Amiri Jeshi Mkuu wa Majeshi ya Ulinzi na Mheshimiwa Mama wa Taifa Margaret Kenyatta, Mheshimiwa William Ruto, Naibu wa Rais wa Jamhuri ya Kenya na Mheshimiwa B. Rachel Ruto, Mheshimiwa John Ramani Mahama, Rais Mustafu wa Jamhuri ya Ghana, Waheshimiwa Speaker wa Bunge la Kitaifa na Bunge la Senate, Mheshimiwa Jaji Mkuu Aliye pia rais wa mahakama ya juu, governor wa Nairobi City County, waheshimiwa mabarozi, makamishna wakuu na maofisa wa kidiplomasia, viongozi wote na wananchi wa jamhuri tuipendayo, mabibi na mabwana. Your Excellency sir, earlier today the National Celebrations Committee had an opportunity of presenting an elaborate one and a half hour entertainment program from 9 a.m. I therefore wish to most humbly request Your Excellency, sir, to allow us to present only one item of entertainment that will be presented by the joint parastatos, ministries, and companies, choir from all over the Republic. The choir will present a medley of patriotic songs that have over time emoted a strong patriotic spirit amongst the people of Kenya and one traditional Christmas carol to usher in the Christmas spirit. The songs were arranged by Mwalimu Sylvester Otieno of Kenyatta University. And Your Excellency, this is just a section of the joint Parastatos Ministries and Companies Choir. The other choirs from the Parastatos and Ministries have been sent to the various counties in Kenya to also take part in the celebrations in the counties. Your Excellency, sir, ladies and gentlemen, the choir presenting a medley of patriotic songs. Karibu, Mweshimiwa Rais.
kofi wanapoondoka uwajani kwaya yetu ya Parastatos Ministries and Company Square na kwa onyesho hilo mheshimiwa rais ndio tutatia kikomo burudani la siku ya leo na kwa sasa ni heshima kwangu kubwa mheshimiwa rais kumwalika governor wa Nairobi City County mheshimiwa Mike Buvisonko aweze kutusalimbia kwa kifupi na aweze kumwalika mheshimiwa naibu wa rais Mheshimiwa William Ruto kuiongoza rasmi ratiba ya kubukubu hii ya siku muhimu ya Jamhuri. Asante sana Mheshimiwa Rais. Your, Your Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya Uhuru Kenyatta. Your Excellency the First Lady Mamangina Kenyatta. Your Excellency the Deputy President, William Samoe Ruto. Your Excellency, Mama Rachel Ruto. Your Excellency, former President of the Republic of Ghana, John Mahama. Your Excellencies, High Commissioners and Ambassadors present, invited guests, all protocol observed, ladies and gentlemen. It is my humble duty and pleasure to welcome you all to the city of Nairobi. And on this special day, Your Excellency, allow me to warmly congratulate you and your deputy for second five-year mandate Kenyans gave you to run the affairs of this nation. Congratulations. As you rightly pointed out, during your swearing in, the time for politics is over. It is now time to unite Kenyans 
and restore the country on a path to economic growth and prosperity. Jamuri Day is the most important day in the calendar of Kenya. On this day, we remember the sacrifices of our forefathers who fought hard and gave their lives to free our country and give us our independence. Their desire was that Kenyans must live in dignity and freedom and enjoy the right to decide their future that Kenya has exclusive rights to decide its own future. This Jamuri Day should also remind us of the bright future ahead for our children. Kenya's economy is ready to take off under the leadership of His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta. We should now strive to reach double-digit economic growth and reduce inflation to single digits. Nairobi remains the financial, transport, and cultural center of East Africa. The capital city will continue to promote innovation and entrepreneurship, especially for the young people. My desire is to ensure our people enjoy the fruits of independence, as well as devolution by bringing services closer to the people. We have prioritized infrastructure development throughout the 17 sub-counties. Your Excellency, we have embarked on a program to upgrade roads. Nairobi City County is going digital to improve revenue collection and is seeking a lasting solution to the problem of solid waste. We recently launched 26 fire engines and ambulances that are now stationed in all sub-counties. And in the first quarter of 2018, we shall host the Nairobi We Want Convection to review our priorities for the, for the next five years. In conclusion, I would like to emphasize the need for Kenyans to embrace the vision of the country's independence heroes and heroines. The vision of a society where everyone has equal opportunity and is rewarded according to their efforts. I wish all Nairobians and all Kenyans a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year 2018. Thank you all and may God bless you. Let me take this opportunity to invite His Excellency, the Deputy President, none other than William Samoe Arapruto. Welcome, Your Excellency. Asante sana, Mike. Mwishmiwa Rais wa Jamuhuri ya Kenya. Na pia Amiri Jeshi Mkuu wa Majeshi yote ya Kenya. Mwishmiwa Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. Mama Wataifa, Mama Margaret Kenyatta. The Chief Justice and President of the Supreme Court. the speakers of both Senate and National Assembly, cabinet secretaries present, the leaders of majority both in Senate and the National Assembly together with senators and members of parliament present, all leaders, our CDF, General Mwathete and all the service commanders, distinguished Kenyans, members of our diplomatic corps, your excellencies, and Dugu wa Kenya wote hamjambo. Hamjambo tena. Wa Kenya hoye. Wa Kenya hoye. Today we are gathered here to celebrate our founding fathers for their courage and determination in which they wrestled our country to independence 
from our colonial masters. We celebrate Kenyans and Kenyan leaders who came before us for their commitment and the progress that has been made for us to come this far. And we celebrate those who are here today, our rule of law and our democracy that gives us the opportunity to choose our leaders and choose our priorities that enable us to transform our country and develop our nation. On this day, first Jamuhuri day after our general election, in a very profound way, we want to thank all Kenyans who came forward to discharge their patriotic, constitutional, and democratic right to choose leaders in our country and to choose for us our program for the next five years. In a very special way, I want to thank all those who voted for Uhuru Kenyatta and Jubilee and gave us the mandate to lead the country for the next five years. You, the people who voted for Uhuru Kenyatta, made history. Uhuru Kenyatta today is the president who has been voted and won three elections in under five years. We celebrate those who voted for our worthy competitors in NASA. They too made our politics competitive and gave us the opportunity to demonstrate that we are truly a progressive and we tested all the institutions of our democracy. To them, we say too, congratulations. The journey ahead, led by our President Uhuru Kenyatta, will now involve all of us. Nobody should be left behind. That journey must involve all of us as Kenyans, irrespective of how we voted. It must involve all leaders, those who won and those who did not. And it must involve those in government and those in the opposition because we owe it to those who vote for our independence and secured our democracy for us to work together so that our tomorrow will be better than our today and that our future will be greater than our present. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a celebration and it is now my humble duty and responsibility to ask all of us to be upstanding so that we can request His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, to make his Jamahuri Day statement. Mr. President, sir. Asante ni sana. Wa Kenya wenzangu hamjambu. Hamjambu tena. Asante ni, asante ni, tuketi. Distinguished guests, led by my good friend and brother, President Mahama, former president of Ghana, fellow Kenyans, today we commemorate our 54th birthday as an independent nation. On this day, 54 years ago, the Union Jack came down and the Kenyan flag went up as a symbol of our nationhood. It was designed 
to fix our eyes and minds on and always remember three things. First and foremost is that our independence was bought at a great price. The founding fathers of this nation gave their lives for our liberty. The red in our flag is a reminder of the price paid by the veterans of our independence struggle. Second, the flag is a symbol of our identity as Africans. The founding fathers, such as Achiengo Neko, Bildad Kagia, Kungo Karumba, Jomo Kenyatta, Fred Kubai, Paul Gay, were all very proud Africans. The black in our flag, therefore, celebrates this African identity. Third, when the Founding Fathers designed our flag, they wrote our future on it. The green which symbolizes the natural wealth that we have been given by God, and white, peace that they won for us, and ours is to turn all this into shared prosperity. We thank our Founding Fathers, and indeed today we pledge again to protect the heritage and the liberty for which they sacrificed so dearly. Most importantly, we commit to work together, harder and in unity, to build a peaceful and prosperous nation. Fellow Kenyans, unity is paramount to the realization of a peaceful and prosperous nation. Every Kenyan must understand its value and how our individual choices, particularly in politics, play into building or destroying it. The unity of our nation is the shield against the dangers that have shattered other countries. It protects us against any enemy by frustrating attempts to divide and therefore weaken us. Unity allows us to forge forward together in building families, communities, counties, and a nation that knows what it wants and where it is going. <clears throat> Every day we see evidence of how much stronger and well-off united families are. It is indeed the same with a nation. Families that are united may disagree on some matters but they will always be guided by the well-being of the family. And they know that disagreement must never lead to discord. Let us bring this understanding to our citizens so that in our words and in our actions, we reject the politics of divisiveness and confrontation. Fellow Kenyans, Today we also celebrate a rebirth, a shift from the Today we celebrate what our founding fathers imagined and created, but we also celebrate the generational transition from their generation to ours. When our founding fathers constituted Kenya, they did it with the fresh wounds from the independence war. They had conquered the enemy, but the daunting task of uniting our communities into one nation remained. That was why they taught us to celebrate our diversity and to preserve our traditions. But they did caution that we should not poison the minds of our young people with ethnic disharmony. As your fourth president, I will not tire of reminding you that you will have a fifth and even tenth president, but we will not have a second, third, or fourth Kenya. Preserving Kenya is preserving yourself because Kenya is you and you are Kenya. I am proud to be a Kenyan, to belong to a nation 
that has within a few short decades shown the world the excellence of its people, its love of democracy and liberty, and its ambition to be a force for good in our region and the world. I call on all Kenyans to join me in proclaiming pride in our beloved country. Celebrate being a part of a generation that can and will be remembered fondly by those yet to be born for the achievements you will add to those of our forefathers. As your president, I also pledge to you today to continue to work to bring harmony between communities, to deepen our unity, and to foster national cohesion. I want you in this spirit to also turn to the person sitting or standing next to you. Greet them and say how proud you are to be Kenyan and tell them that you are their keeper because to be Kenyan at its core is about loving your neighbor. My friends, our founding fathers taught us one more thing. That the person who plants is not always the one who harvests. They toiled to plant this nation, though they knew it was their children who would harvest the fruits of their labor. It is our generation that has reaped that harvest, and we have the responsibility of protecting our inheritance, renewing it periodically, so that our children and our children's children can harvest the fruits of our labor. Fellow Kenyans, there is a different thinking that has been evolving. A thinking that offends the principles of the Founding Fathers. The thinking that promotes the belief that we strengthen the weak by weakening the strong. It wants us to believe that a Kenyan can climb the ladder of prosperity only if he brings down a fellow Kenyan. This thinking has cost us lives and property in the last few months. I condole with those who have lost their loved ones and property in the recent disturbances. Fellow Kenyans, for a long time now, many in our political arena have believed that politics matters more than economic development. We have drawn Kenyans into our squabbles. For 50 years, we have squabbled over politics for politics' sake and squandered economic opportunities that would have made a difference in the lives of our people. My friends, there is abundant evidence that focusing on economic development does transform nations. Over the 50 years, we have seen countries that focused on development and nothing but development leap from poverty to prosperity. Singapore, a city-state, is a shining example. It focused on using politics to build its economy and was so ambitious and disciplined that it became a world leader in multiple sectors. Fellow Kenyans, as Africans, we should not accept poverty as our fate. It is merely the outcome of wrong solutions and priorities. For proof of this, you only need to take a look at the countries that have focused on politics for its own sake, and they are bound on our continent. No one has been able to break out into real and sustain prosperity for its people, and many even have been destroyed through war and conflict. It is time to reject this false notion of politics for politics' sake. Our founding fathers knew that we would never be totally free unless we were also prosperous. Fellow Kenyans, I have seen a future and it is at hand. The politics and the pursuit of politics for politics sake must be a thing of the past. The pursuit of political leadership for economic liberation is our future and it is up to us as Kenyans to deliver it. The future is now. It is about a healthy nation, 
built on equal opportunity for all, dignity for all, and the pursuit of material prosperity for all. As I have stated before, and I repeat, as President of Kenya, I am willing and commit to engaging all Kenyans and all Kenyan leaders, including my worthy competitors, irrespective of their religious or ethnic affiliation, in fashioning this new paradigm shift. During my inauguration address on the 28th of December at this very same stadium, I mentioned the more than 700 campaign rallies that I attended across the entire country. During these rallies, you and I had lengthy and productive national conversation. In our interactions, four things emerged as the major concern that deserved our focus over the next five years. You indeed told me that a jobless Kenyan is a desperate Kenyan. You told me also that a hungry Kenyan is a negative Kenyan. You told me that a sick Kenyan is a weak Kenyan. And you also told us that a homeless Kenyan is a Kenyan without hope. You, the Kenyan people, spoke clearly. We want dignity. We want to put enough food on our tables. And we want a lower cost of living. We listened. Since and on reflection, I have come up with four responses to these concerns, and I call them the big four. Food security, affordable housing, manufacturing, and affordable health care for all. During the next five years, I will dedicate the energy, time, and resources of my administration to these big four. The big four will create jobs which will enable our people to meet their basic needs. Jobs will transform the lives of our people from that of hardship and want to new lives of greater comfort and well-being. And that is the future that I have seen. In the first pillar of the big four, we will focus on creating jobs by expanding our manufacturing sector. Manufacturing is about believing that we as Kenyans can be competitive and ambitious enough to make products that are as good as any other in the world. The selfishness and corruption of some amongst us have allowed counterfeiters and cartels to flourish at the expense of our local manufacturers. As a result, some companies have gravely suffered. It is time for us to say that enough is enough. We must face and defeat these enemies. To conquer these enemies and boost manufacturing requires we keep a common vision and remain focused, and equally critical that our workers must remain in harmony with our employers. Let me emphasize that political stability and a harmonious labor relations are the bedrock on which we shall achieve a robust manufacturing sector. In boosting the manufacturing sector, my administration will focus on four subsectors the blue economy, agro processing, leather, and textiles. With the blue economy, we have a total of about 400 kilometers of rich coastline and a share of the second largest fresh lake, freshwater lake in the world. Indeed, it is shameful that we exploit only a small fraction of these God-given resources. Our coastal and marine ecosystems, if properly exploited, would create tens of thousands of jobs for our people. Instead, we have allowed others to take our resources, build their economies, and create jobs for their people at our expense. Today, foreign trawlers enter our waters and return to their countries filled with our fish. This must end. 
I direct the ministries of defense and agriculture to immediately begin intercepting all illegal fishing vessels and to suspend the fishing licenses of all international trawlers operating in Kenya's territorial waters until they comply with our requirement for local input. These boats must land their catches in Kenya. The work of cleaning and packing fish for export must be done in Kenya by Kenyans. We also want to significantly expand fishing. Instead of the current 2,500 metric tons of fish we process annually, our intention is to process 18,000 metric tons and grow the blue economy sevenfold. This means that young people from Igingo to Bita, from Kiunga to Vanga, from Faza to Chale will find jobs and reliable incomes as fishermen and fishmongers as well as processors, wholesalers, and retailers. We will also expand our shipping industry in order to maximize on our maritime opportunities. Turning to leather, every year, Kenyans buy more than 30 million pairs of shoes. As the holder of the third largest cattle herd on Africa, Kenya has enough leather to make all these shoes. Yet we only make a tiny fraction. We must change this and make leather products locally. This way, we can also transform the livelihoods of hundreds of thousands of families. We will ensure that all hides and skins are fully processed locally to support our leather industry. And in this spirit, today we direct that all boots, leather products, and textiles for our disciplined forces be procured from local manufacturers with effect from the financial year 2018-19. However, I add a word of caution. Our disciplined forces are among the best in the world. They, they deserve first-class goods and services, and I expect our local manufacturers to meet that high standard. On textiles, the American market, through the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act, is open, but we have not yet taken full advantage. We must now strive to make th the most of this market. Today, we only realize a fraction of the potential value of the clothes we export to the U.S. If cotton from the fabric were grown and woven locally, we would raise revenues from the current 30 billion to 200 billion shillings. Under the Big Four plan, we will support farmers to plant cotton, which we will guarantee to buy. We have revived Rivertex and are in the process of reviving other textile plants. And we will now give incentives to investors to build more modern generis and textile manufacturing plants. On agro-processing, my administration will support value addition for our agricultural produce. Kenyans need to know that at present, 70% of the value of our export produce goes to processes abroad. When Kanyanyaini Tea Factory produces tea, it is packed, auctioned, and exported. The dealer who brands it for the supermarket abroad makes more than 10 times what the farmer in Kanyanyane makes. We receive only 30% of the real value of our produce, in addition to losing out on jobs. You know also that coffee is one of the most traded commodities in the world, and Kenya is one of the world's leading producers of high-quality Arabica coffee, yet our returns from the end product of coffee production are minimal. As part of our plan, our tea, our coffee, our meat, fruits, and vegetables will now have to be processed locally. This way, we will obtain more value for our produce and create more jobs and wealth for Kenyans. 
Fellow Kenyans, my administration has already made some early decisions to give our manufacturing the very best chance of growth. First, as I mentioned during my inauguration speech, we have cut the cost of off-peak power to heavy industry by half. Second, we will review our work permit regime and encourage expatriates whose skills support the big four. As part of the arrangement, we will also expect our partners to train Kenyans in these skills. Third, the protection of intellectual property rights is a critical factor in supporting the growth of our local manufacturing. Even as we buy Kenya and build Kenya, we cannot enrich fraudsters who masquerade as well as well-known brands producing dangerous fakes. To protect our manufacturers and consumers from these fake products, such as cosmetics, batteries, and fake kerosene, sham products that endanger the lives of Kenyans, I have already directed that the Kenya Revenue Authority and the Kenya Anti-Counterfeit Authority to from now destroy on site counterfeits upon seizure. Any public officer found colluding to frustrate this process will be summarily dismissed and immediately prosecuted. <laughs> Fellow Kenyans, we know from experience in other parts of the world the central role small and medium-sized enterprises can play in an economy. Here in Kenya, the bulk of employment comes from SMEs, which are an important contributor to our gross domestic product. Our plan is to create an additional 1,000 SMEs focusing on manufacturing. They will have access to affordable capital, skills, and market, and they will accelerate the growth in manufacturing upon which our success depends. I will now speak to the second question that we raised in our conversation, access to affordable and decent shelter. If the fight for independence was about ownership, the dream of our generation is to make every Kenyan a property owner. Owning a decent home is a dream for every Kenyan, and we have to make that dream come true. Take Nairobi as an example. If you rent a house in Kawangware, Kangemi, Gudarai, Dandora, then under our plan, for the same amount of money that you pay rent today, you should and will be able to own your own home. And it will be a decent house built to modern standards. It is my intention that by the end of my term, 500,000 more Kenyans will own their own homes. And we shall do this by reducing the cost of mortgages, by cutting the cost of construction through the use of innovative technologies and materials, and by raising low-cost funds from private and public sector for investment in large-scale housing construction. The beauty of this plan is that it also creates, not, not only does it create decent homes, but also jobs and a market for our manufacturers and suppliers. We look forward to all of this producing thousands of new jobs, but we will not engage our young people to build these homes as mere labor. We will develop their skills, their acumen, through our tivits so that they may excel. We will review legislation on urban planning and zoning to ensure that homes remain affordable. We will continue to issue more title deeds to enable landowners to unlock the financial potential of their property. In this context, we shall shortly present far-reaching amendments to the laws that govern our land and housing, and we will map and use the entirety of our strategic housing land bank. I turn to the third element of our big four, and that is universal health care. Indeed, in our conversations, it was obvious that the cost of health care still stresses many families. We can end that pain by providing medical insurance cover for every Kenyan within the next five years. That shall entail major policy 
and administrative reforms in the medical sector to ensure that all of us have access to quality and affordable medical cover by 2022. The plan will of necessity require strong collaboration between the National Hospital Insurance Fund and our private sector insurance providers. We will review the rules governing private insurers to bring the cost of cover within the reach of every Kenyan to protect both government and Kenyans from fraud and abuse and to let private insurers invest more in covering Kenyans. The fourth element is food security and nutrition. Since independence, we as a people have sought to ensure that our citizens enjoy food security and proper nutrition. And while we have made good progress, the challenge, however, remains yet to be fully conquered. It is time to address once and for all the multiple and interlocking fact factors that leave too many Kenyans at risk of hunger. Our immediate actions start now. We will bring targeted taxation to bear to put idle arable land to use. We will continue to encourage and facilitate large-scale commercial agriculture to diversify our staples through irrigation and other technologies. We will protect our water towers. Small-scale farmers will receive better extension services and market access, and subsidies will be redesigned to improve food yields and production quality. With the private sector, we will deal with the challenges of distribution, waste, storage, and value addition that have so long hampered our production. The Ministries of Agriculture and Irrigation will shortly publish the terms and conditions by which commercial farmers will be able to lease idle agricultural land owned by government, the better to raise our production of strategic crops. Fellow Kenyans, the Big Four requires brave steps to lower the cost of doing business across the country. In the last four years, we have made tremendous progress in this direction. We cut the cost of doing business by modernizing and expanding our infrastructure. We improve the ease of doing business so, so successfully that we jumped from number 136 in the world to number 80 in just four years. We will build on this rapid progress by taking measures such as cutting the number and costs of permits, licenses at both national and county level. To deliver the big four, we will need skilled Kenyans, and that is why we are implementing the new education curriculum to prepare our children to compete with the best in the world. We are also improving the enabling industry-led technical and vocational education and training, and we have taken steps to ensure that the same high standards and professional rigor we used to train our best graduate engineers are replicated also in the vocational training of our fundies, plumbers, welders, and masons. We will also develop more skilled and competitive workers through my administration's planned, paid for internship program that will lead to the absorption of more than 100,000 young Kenyans into the job market every year. Most of all, the Big Four requires that we build on the foundation we laid in my first term in sectors such as transport, electricity, distribution, education, and ICT. Fellow Kenyans, the big shift from politics for politics' sake to the politics of production is a beacon of hope. However, I know it will attract cynics and pessimists but we will not be distracted. Let me emphasize that this big shift cannot and will not be achieved by me and Jubilee alone. It will need all of us. Once again, I reach out to all Kenyans to help in achieving our common goal of peace, stability, and prosperity for all. It is our shared responsibility 
to work for these ends, knowing that we all have a role to play and we all must listen to one another. After all, a good idea must always give way to a better idea wherever it comes from. At independence, our young people were filled with optimism. They were the architects of our republic, and many of them were young people guided by a few elder statesmen. The independence constitution was negotiated and crafted by young people. Though a few of our young people have been led astray by ethnic-based divisive politics, I am encouraged by the much larger number of our youth who work hard, who are hustling, who approach challenges as opportunities. You are uplifting your families, your communities, and our nation. My administration will work every day to open up a path for your energy and optimism. Together, we can make Kenya anything that we imagine. This is your moment as young people. I believe in you, and you are my partners. And that is why my Big Four plan is centered on you. You will drive the big shift from politics to prosperity. We will support your small and medium-sized businesses so that you can become even more productive, profitable, and able to hire other young people. My administration will com complement the financing by commercial banks by increasing and consolidating all SME financing currently provided under the umbrella of the Kenya industrial estates. I have also directed the Ministry of Trade and Industry to establish the SME support initiative that will work to help ease the barriers that make it difficult to run and scale up your businesses. Let me conclude by saying that when I took the oath of office in 2013, which was renewed last month, Kenyans did also bestow on me two instruments of power. The first one was the Constitution, and the second was of our defense forces, and this I will not fail in. Today, I serve notice to those treating our constitutional order with casual recklessness that the Constitution is the general will of all. No one, including myself, is above it. No matter who you are, you are subject to its authority. Anything outside the Constitution is a hostile intrusion. Whoever destroys property, whoever chooses senseless violence over constitutional order, all these are enemies of the Republic, and that is how they will be treated. In closing, fellow Kenyans, I wish to reiterate the point I made earlier. There will be a fifth, sixth, and even tenth president of Kenya but there will not be a second, third, or fourth Kenya. Leaders come and go, but Kenya remains. Our duties are therefore clear. We must preserve that nationhood. We must achieve the freedom and prosperity that are ours by right. To tembe pamoja safari hii bega kwa bega. And I believe if we do so, we will have proved ourselves the rightful heirs of that nation that God has given us. Mimi nataka tu kumaliza kwa kuwashukuru wa Kenya tena, kwa kunipatia nafasi ya kuongoza taifa letu tukufu kwa muda mwingine wa miaka mitano. Na mimi tena Natoa hakikisho langu ya kwamba mimi niko tiari kufanya kazi na wakenya wote, viongozi wote, 
ndio tuweze ndio tuweze kutimiza lengo letu la kuhakikisha ya kwamba tuko na taifa ambalo kila mkenya tusipojali dini ama rangi ama kabila anajivunia taifa lake anafurahia taifa lake ana mapato kutoka taifa lake na hiyo jukumu la tuhitaji sisi wote kwa hivyo wenzangu mimi nasema siasa zimeisha sasa ni mipangilio ya vile tutasonga mbele na naomba viongozi wote njooni tushirikiane pamoja njooni tushauriane pamoja kwa niaba ya wakenya ambao wametupatia hii nafasi nimalize nimalize kwa kusema sasa wakati haswa tunaelekea katika siku kuu ya Christmas na mwaka mpya nataka niwaombe wa Kenya haswa madriver wetu tafadhalini tujichunge kwa mabarabara zetu hii siku chache tumepoteza waimbaji wengi tumepoteza pia pali hapo hapo kulikuwa accident ingine juzi leo hii pia bungoma accident ambayo imechukua maisha ya wakenya wengi tafadhalani tafadhalini tujichunge let us be cautious on our roads during this festive season let us realize especially those drivers of public transport that you are not carrying cabbage you are carrying the lives of people and you need to take care and equally we take this opportunity to also instruct our police force that anybody caught flouting traffic rules immediate and severe action must be taken against those particular individuals kwa hivyo wa Kenya wenzangu nasema asanteni sana nichukue nafasi hii kuwatakia wa Kenya wote merry christmas na mwaka mpya wafanaka na baraka kwa wakenya wote. Asanteni sana na Mungu awabariki. Thank you. Tusimame kwa wimbo wa taifa. tafadhali tubaki tukiwa tumetulia hadi watakapoondoka watakapoondoka rais wetu wa jamhuri ya Kenya
African na rice anthem, staff, uh, coming Ruhiana, to a close the 54th uh, celebrations of Jamuhuri Day marked here President at the Kasarani Uhuru. International Uhuru. Sports Stadium. Uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta marking this day by closing statements uh, and sending a stern warning to those who are driving to any part of this country uh, to ensure that they are loyal to the rule of law and uh, they ensure that no more lives have been lost. Uh, he today uh, honoring those who have died on the road since last Saturday. We lost about 22 people at the Loruk accident. We lost about seven musicians at uh, the Nakuru uh, Eldoret Highway. And and uh, this morning, a grisly accident that has taken away the lives of about 14 Kenyans along uh, the Sachingwon Road. This is uh, quite uh, an, a season where Kenyans are being asked to be very vigilant on the road and ensure that they travel for the festivities and uh, being careful and cautious as they go to various places. The president also leaving this area, uh, having urged the opposition leaders, Raila Odinga, having not mentioned him uh, officially, but saying that he's issuing a stern warning to every Kenyan who believes that he is above the law. And uh, the law is very clear in his mind that anybody who wants to do something that is outside the confines of the Constitution will not be spared by the legal entities and he says that uh, this is his last term in office and he has raised four key issues that he feels will be important for him. He wants to take care of food security, he wants to ensure that there are better living conditions for Kenyans, he wants to ensure that also the blue economy, the job creation is a part of his agenda in terms of supporting the blue economy and uh, he spoke uh, very well about the issue of uh, fishing uh, in uh, especially in the Megingo area where so many Kenyan fishers have been arrested before and he says that all foreign fishers who are within the Kenyan waters should have a legal mandate to do so. So this has been uh, the 54th celebration of uh, Jamuhuri Day celebrations. We saw an impressive uh, trooping of the color by the Moi Air Base uh, uh, Kenya Air Force officials. They took about 30 minutes to do their thing in the middle of uh, this uh, uh, stadium and they were handed over uh, their flag and marched to uh, their joy and uh, in honor of the commander in chief of the Kenya Defense Forces. This has been a live transmission of uh, those festivities. I take you back to studio. This is NTV. I've been alone for a long time. Not because I want to be. But because until I solve this problem, I have to be. Your target is a fugitive from the U.S. government who stole military secrets. This is a location. Snatch and grab only. Live capture. Take him. Give it everything you got. Take it out. Follow me. What's he's going in? Pull back now. The Easy Banking app is your bank anywhere, anytime. Everything you do at the bank is on Easy Banking app. Download the Easy Banking app from Google Play Store or App Store and link your Equity Bank account. Easy Banking. Experience convenience in life.
Allied schools are physically designed to provide homely environment conducive for learning. Intakes are ongoing at New Light schools for Form 1 to 3, Nursery to Year 7. Register now. New Light schools, forever shining. Kenya is hosting the maiden launch of China-Africa Industrial Capacity Cooperation Exhibition that will kick off on December 13 to December 16 at the Kenyatta International Convention Center, KICC in Nairobi. For inquiries, call or email us today. Entry is free. A plot with 45,000 shillings and get either a boozy, microwave, toaster, or blender. Amazing, right? Don't miss out on our open day on the 16th of December 2017 at Tulip Valley Joska. For inquiries, SMS Joska to 40205. Karaja is there connected. My beautiful wife, Diohuyo, connected. Hi, Daddy. Please say hi to my boyfriend. Woo! Scoot over. Who are you? Eric. Eric who? From where? When and why? It doesn't matter. Bring me the Bogwa destroyer. Boy child. Leo, umepatana na simba wa nyuba. Not my daughter. What internet do you use? I use fiber. What speeds? 30 Mbps. You know na nimewajenga na five times the speed. Nyuba tujenga sana. No buffery, no downtime, super fast speed. There is nothing as good as fiber. Ah. My son, Karibu, who are this guy of blackberry, some cranberry juice? Betika, bet on a winner. Goal of the week brought to you by Betika. Star 644 hash or visit betika.com and place a bet for as low as 49 shillings with over 700 million shillings won every month and over 1 million winners. Betika is also available on Oprah Mini. I'm telling you, don't interfere with me now. What is this? When will your tales of drama ever come to an end, girl? Ni nasomaga messages wakati natumia mama yaku SMS na simu yako. What? You read my messages? Babe, just calm down. Don't let her ruin our day, okay? I will never let this day to end. No one can stop. May this Christmas bring you away plenty of reasons to smile. Wishing you and your family a very happy and joyous Christmas season. Kinder Joy, see the happiness grow with a delicious treat of tasty cocoa and milk creams and two crispy wafer balls. With new toys every time. Kinder Joy, every day a joyful reward. Join the University of Nairobi. Visit our website www.uonbi.ac.ke. Apply online now at www.application.uonbi.ac.ke. When buying land, get a topography and soils report to be sure if you can build on the plot and make sure that what you're buying is 100% yours. 
Welcome to our open day on the 16th of December 2017 and enjoy amazing Christmas offers of 500,000 Kenya shillings for cash buyers and 650,000 Kenya shillings for installment buyers. SMS LAND to 21595. Buy today, build tomorrow. Karaja is where connected. My beautiful wife, Dio, who you're connected. Hi, Daddy. Please say hi to my boyfriend. Who? You got to get over there. Scoot over. Who are you? Eric. Eric who? From where? When and why? Eric. It doesn't matter. Bring me the Bogwa Destroyer. Boy, child. Leo, you have to go to the Not my daughter. What internet do you use? I use fiber. What speeds? 30 Mbps. You know, I'm going to check on five times the speed. And you're going to sana. No buffery, no downtime, super fast speeds. There is nothing as good as fight back. Ah, my son, Karibu. Oh, this guy has blackberry, some cranberry juice. What is reliability? Reliability is a car that performs as it should. Most importantly, reliability is a battery built to keep going. You can count on Chloride Exide Powerlast maintenance-free batteries. Because Chloride Exide Power Last is the longer lasting battery. Where is the pump? Where is the pump? The pulse, the pump. New Minute Made Pulpy Orange. The pulse, the pulse. Shake it, drink it, chew it. Limuru Downs by Premier Realty Limited, located along Kikuyu Mutarakwa Road, is offering serviced one eighth acre plots ideal for housing development, investment, or farming. Cash offer is 600,000. Installment 700,000 shillings. Pay 10% and balance in six months. Site visit every Wednesday and Saturday. For details, text plot to 21408. Premier Realty Limited, your trusted real estate partner. Do you want to receive your Lipana M Pesa money directly into your bank account at no additional costs and access to loans based on your transactions? Cooperative Bank has you covered. Simply SMS the word Lipana M Pesa and your business location to 16111 and we'll help you link the TIL number to your Coop Bank account. If you do not have a TIL number, we will help you get one and link it to your Coop Bank account. Cooperative Bank. We are you. Your last chance to get even bigger discounts. Jumia Black Friday clearance sale. Boozy for only 1,000 shillings. 32 inch Vision Plus Smart TV for only 19,499 shillings. Black and Decker rice cooker for only 4,599 shillings. Get the best of the last from the 4th of December. Jumia, the online shop you can trust. Download our app for more deals. Betika, bet on a winner. Goal of the week brought to you by Betika. Dial star 644 hash or visit betika.com and place a bet for as low as 49 shillings with over 700 million shillings won every month and over 1 million winners. Betika is also available on Oprah Mini. May this Christmas bring you away plenty of reasons to smile. Wishing you and your family a very happy and joyous Christmas season. Kinder Joy, see the happiness grow with a delicious treat of tasty cocoa and milk creams and two crispy wafer balls. 
with new toys every time. Kinder Joy, every day a joyful reward. This is NTV. Just in time for the latest update from NTV. My name is Trevor Mbija. We hope you're having a great Jamhuri day, but we want to start off this bulletin on a rather somber note. At least 15 people are feared dead in a road accident in Sashang 1. Many more have sustained injuries in the accident involving a modern coast bus and three other vehicles along the Nakuru Eldred Highway. The accident happened after a truck driver who was allegedly being pursued by the National Transport and Safety Authority lost control of the vehicle and hit the other vehicles, a modern coast bus, four public service vans, a truck and several other smaller vehicles. The accident this morning occurred barely two days after another one killed seven people along the same road at Kamara. Still on the roads on more sad news, 20 people lost their lives last night in a grisly road accident at Kamkuyua, the Kimilili constituency on the Kitalewe Buye Highway. 14 people died on the spot while six others died while undergoing treatment at the Lugulu Mission Hospital as well as Webuye Referral Hospital. Several others are still hospitalized. Zakius Mwasame has more from Bungoma. Eyewitnesses say the 8.30 p.m. accident occurred after a cane tractor belonging to West Kenya Sugar Company broke down at the Kamkuya Bridge. A lorry transporting several sacks of maize from Kitale then hit the packed tractor that had no signals of breakdown before landing into a ditch, prompting four other vehicles that had approached to swerve, leading to a head-on collision. Two passenger matatus hit each other, leading to the death of 14 people on the spot. Gari ambayo ilikuwa inaifuata, immediately ambayo ilikuwa ni lori, ikajaribu kuiavoid na ikagwarusa nisan moja ambayo imesha kuwa todu ni mepleo kwa police station. Na hiyo lori, ika overfly rails hizi ya barabara ikaanguka chini ya ya, ya daraja kule chini wale watu walikuwa kwa hiyo trailer kwa Nissan wakafa wote wale wenye walikuwa bado kwa trailer ya miwa bado wakafa watu watatu lakini wale walikuwa kwa Nissan wamekufa wote one of the vehicles was ferrying people from a party in Matunda the police however could not establish the number of people who died and the vehicles they were using Ni ajali ambayo imeuzisha magari uh, tano na tractor. Tractor ambayo ilikuwa imepata tire burst ikiwa imebeba miwa. Tractor ya West Kenya. Polisi wa ban hizi trailer hizi tractor za kubeba miwa usiku kwa sababu hazina reflector nyuma. Hazina indicator nyuma. Ingine mataa hata haifanyi kazi. Na mimi ni maambia vijana yangu sababu hii ni mara ya pili. Kuanzia kesho tractor ya miwa ambayo itapatikana kufika saa 12 kwa barabarani. Vijana wataikamata na kuizuia mpaka asubuhi ndio waiachilie. Kwa sababu maisha ya watu ni ya muhimu zaidi kuliko kupeleka miwa katika factory. This is the second accident to occur at the same spot in a span of three weeks. Four people lost their lives two weeks ago after the vehicle they were traveling in rolled. Residents fear more lives will be lost if measures are not taken to avoid similar incidents in the future. Zakius Masame, NTV, Bungoma. All our condolences goes out to the family and friends and all those who lost their loved ones in the grisly accidents. We now shift focus to the Kasarani Sports Stadium where the National Jamhuri Day celebrations have just concluded. NTV's Leila Mohammed has been covering those events. They are live. One of the things that caught the president's attention really was the fatal road accidents that have been on the increase. Leila, what else stood out for you? <laughs> 